let's move this thing along here and get into this survey. So do you want to read this headline here? And then we'll just kind of go through what this survey, this article talks mm -hmm. about. Evangelicals list top issues facing the U.S. It says a new survey reveals that evangelicals view immigration, American sovereignty, and abortion as the top issues facing the United States heading into the 2024 presidential election. Coral Ridge Ministries released its 2024 Spiritual State of the Nation survey last week which is based on 633 responses. A majority of those surveyed, 56%, cited immigration as one of the three most important issues facing the U.S., while 33% of respondents listed America's sovereignty, abortion, 32%, federal spending, 30 and religious freedom, 24% rounded out the top five issues most frequently identified as things federal leaders must address. Others issues, um, other issues viewed as most critical facing Congress and the next administration by smaller shares of respondents include national security, 21%, the economy, 19%, a growth in socialist views, 14%, the protection of traditional values, 14%. Trans rights, 14% as well. Healthcare, 13. The racial divide, 13. The advance of radical Islam, 11%. And education, 6%. Yeah, mm. so um, I think pretty enlightening. Um, you know, it says in here, among the evangelicals that were sur surveyed, and for those of you who don't know, evangelical is essentially, according to the Cambridge Dictionary, someone of the Protestant faith uh, that believes the Bible, that Jesus is Lord, and believes in sharing the gospel. That's kind of an evangelical. It's a pretty large group of folks uh, from a range of really faith backgrounds that you could kind of lump into that evangelical crowd. But according to this, uh, this article, these evangelicals, says the number one issue is immigration. Mm. Um, and I'm assuming it's more specifically illegal immigration that they're addressing here. Right, yeah. So how do you feel about this being the biggest issue of concern among evangelicals? Um, I don't know. I was just thinking about the biggest concern. I think it should be noticing the attack on children in the school. Um, just trying to teach them things, <laughs> very inappropriate things for their age. Um, I think that is the biggest concern. So more uh, the like transgender preferring the next generation. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty big concern. Um, I'm actually surprised that the number is as high as it is. You know, this article says that over half view this as the biggest problem we face. Um, it is a big problem still. I mean, it's not like you have to pick one or the other if there was only one you could focus on at a time. It's just... Right. And it divides down both sides of Christianity, if you will, right? There's been a big effort recently by the progressive Christian wing to basically claim that if uh, you don't want like unrestrained, unchecked immigration, then you're not a real Christian. Right. You know, they'll cite yeah. verses like Leviticus 19, 33 through 34. Um, do you want to read that verse? And when a sojourner sojourns with you in your land, you shall not mistreat them. The sojourner who sojourns with you shall be to you as the native among you. And you shall love him as yourself, for you were sojourners in the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh, your God. I mean, they still had rules to follow. They weren't, they, they didn't come in, you know, and just take over and bring chaos and disorder. like. They had to follow this. Yes, of course they did. <laughs> now, so we you know, would, of course, disagree that this means that laws and borders are no longer acceptable in God's eyes, because it was God, after all, that established nations after Babel, um, and he established them for a purpose. But again, it's interesting to see that this is the number one issue. Um, and really, when you look at the way that these questions or this article is written... 
these are kind of the number one and number two issues. Um, because it says that illegal immigration is one and American sovereignty is number two. And you could probably extend American sovereignty beyond simply immigration. Um, like maybe they're considering kind of distancing ourselves from the World Economic Forum or the United Nations, that sort of stuff. Um, but it certainly also includes just allowing an invasion through our southern border. That has to be a part of it, right? Um, and I haven't given this much thought as far as, you know, what issues. I will give you my kind of quick thought on what I think the number one issue is here in a little bit. But I would certainly not disagree or argue with someone who believed that this was the number one issue because we're basically losing our nation and our national mm -hmm. identity to illegal immigration. And it's crazy because it's happening right before us, right in front mm -hmm. of our eyes. We watch this happen and nothing's being done about it. Uh, I saw this article, even Snopes.com, which is pretty left wing, um, Snopes.com. They're trying to downplay the damage from illegal immigration. And they even still had to recognize how bad it was. You know, they claim, oh, there wasn't 10 times the uh, increase in illegal, illegal immigration in the last seven years. It was only six times the <laughs> increase. Only six. Like, look at these numbers. 2017, 300,000. Then 2018, 400. Then 859. Then it dipped back down in 2020. Well, of course. And then 2021, sense. though, it blew through the roof, 1.9, 2022, 2.7, 2023, 3.2. And already in 2024, when this yeah, article that was up written, to the millions. Yeah. Which was February. So by February, it already had a million. So, I mean, wow. That's wow. nearly it really, 11 million people. It really took off after 2020. Yeah, so I'm not sure what wow. changed after 2020. Maybe somebody could enlighten us in the comments, but I'm kidding, of course. I know exactly what happened. But, um, right, so it's a big deal. Uh, it's a big deal, and it's getting bigger and bigger by the day. Um, and it's really interesting to hear Christians, their argument for supporting illegal Im immigration, in my opinion. I um, don't know. What is their main argument for illegal versus legal? I mean, it's just, you know, the love your neighbor kind of a thing. But you're not loving hearing... your neighbor who already is a citizen. Right. It's almost like the exact opposite of like, if you went on an airplane and, you know, you have an emergency in the air. And what do they always tell you? Put the oxygen mask on yourself first and then help the other people around you. Progressive Christianity is like, no, no, no. Spend all your time putting oxygen masks on everyone until you die, and then you can help nobody. And that's kind of what this is. Throw the doors open wide, you know, rob the nation blind until the nation's destroyed, and then we can't help well, anyone Well, they're just anywhere. seeing as the immigrants coming in as the only neighbor. They're the neighbor. <sighs> well, that's yeah, it. I don't know what they see. But again, like this idea that we just throw the doors open wide and let everyone in anytime for any reason, they can just come on in. Um, you know, the way it struck me when I was looking at this was kind of the way that I view so many in sort of that kind of, um, seeker sensitive watered down Christian church that we have today. It's like this really lazy view. Um, you know, we view the church today as an outreach ministry, right? You got this nice church, just bring all the lost sinners into the church, make them comfortable enough to stay here. Mm. And then we'll share the gospel with them and hope that they get saved. And then now it's like, hey, we got immigrants, yeah. bring all the immigrants into America. We'll preach the gospel to them and they might get saved. You know, so rather than us going into all the nations like Christ commanded, we've kind of decided like pretty comfortable over here. Why don't we just bring them all here and do the work? <laughs> so um, I think that's a pretty interesting one. We don't want to leave our comfortable lives. Yeah. Hey, why don't you leave the church and go to the street corner and share the gospel? They're like, just no go. coffee at the street corner. What are you talking about? Let's no. bring them here. It's like, just go hang all your door flyers and, and just sit back and wait for them to come. You're not going to them by hanging some flyers. Not that there's anything wrong with flyers, but that can't be all you do. Right. 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 Um, so, yeah, pretty interesting. I'd be curious to know what you guys think about that as the number one issue. Um, 
And then it goes on in here and it says that abortion is kind of number three. And I do think that's a good number for abortion. 32% um, view this as kind of the most important issue. Now, it would be nice to see that higher, you know, to actually value life. Um, but, you know, we're a nation facing so many kind of national collapsing issues that it's kind of hard to prioritize which one's the most right. important. I know. Uh, every wall of the city is being besieged. It's kind of hard to pick which one to focus on. Um, you know, I personally think I would place this as a higher issue than illegal immigration because if you simply don't have a nation that values human life, then mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's not even a nation worth saving. Mm -hmm. Like, what are we saving this for? So we can spread Moloch, Moloch worship all across the world. Nobody, I don't want that. Um, you know, so I don't know what's the point of stemming the tide of illegal immigration and getting this nation back on track if the plan is just to continue being Satan's hands and feet. I'm right. not overly invested in that. Yeah, why protect a nation? Like, what's the, yeah. How would you care after If America that, but... falls, we can't trans Zimbabwe's kids. Well, I'm all right with that. Yeah. I mean, we really need to just focus on raising our kids, um, right? You know, training them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord and yeah. um, and even our grandchildren. You know, like, don't just focus on your kids, like your grandchildren, um, because they're the ones who are probably going to make a difference um, for the future of our nation. But, I mean, like we've said before, Satan is attacking the core. I mean, the core of the nation is the family. Oh, yeah. um, you know, weaken the husband. Uh, the wife is a feminist. The children are raised by Caesar and the being brainwashed in the public schools. And so, of course, like the main reason for raising your children up in the fear of the Lord is not the goal isn't to save your nation. It's to save your children, of course. Right. But, um yeah, but we know that everyone else is is blessed in the nation when they're following God's ways. It blesses the unbeliever as well. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, we should be getting on track that way, right? Not just saving the nation so we can get iPhone 16 next year. Um, yeah. That can't really be the point. So um, yeah, I would probably place that higher than immigration. But again, I'm not going to fault you for be like, country's collapsing right now. We should do something about that, uh, you know. I would just maybe counter with, maybe if you don't kill 70 million of your own citizens, you might be able to counter that. But uh, the third issue that they mentioned on here, or I guess it's the fourth, is federal spending at 30%. Mm. And this one's funny, right? Because 30% of people are like, this is the most important. And literally, this issue isn't even on the table. Nobody's discussing this issue. Like, President Biden is spending this nation into oblivion. Um, and in response to this, Republican voters in their infinite wisdom decided that they want to run back the guy who ran up the highest deficit in the nation's history. They're like, Biden's crushing us with debt spending. Well, who should replace him? The guy who outspent him. Oh, yeah, that's super smart, right? Uh, so the idea that we're going to get federal mm. spending back under control is not a real realistic goal. Yeah. Um, like, it doesn't matter if Biden's reelected, if Trump's reelected. There should be, in your mind, no realistic expectation that we would slow down the spending. Um, mm. So this really, you know, at the end of the day, this really could be the most important issue. Uh, we may not even have it a nation long enough for illegal immigration to matter um, the way that we spend money. But at the end of the day, nobody cares about this except you, um, as you can't afford to put gas in your car or groceries on the table. Um and this one's interesting as well. Uh, federal spending, you know, just spending the nation into oblivion because, you know, I've been through like suicide awareness training and these sorts of things. And one of the things that you always get told to watch out for when it comes to seeing the warning signs of suicide is like people who were otherwise frugal or whatever that begin to spend lavishly mm -hmm. um, above what you may know that they even have. You know, you know how much they make, but they're just going crazy spending. Or they start giving all their stuff away. That's like, should be immediate cue-ins that like, ooh, something's changed with this person. I should yeah. find out what's happening. Well, like, we have all the signs of national suicide. And nobody seems ha to have any intention to stop it. We're given, we're spending mm. ourselves into oblivion, giving all of our stuff away. And those should be warning signs that like, hey, man, like, 
national suicide might be kind of what they're going for. But instead, we're just like, I don't know, you know, my tax returns came in, so it's cool. Um, And then weirdly, number four among all evangelicals, right, is religious freedom. That's number four at 24%. You know, like how quickly it seems the sort of tyranny of 2020 through 2022 is just kind of faded into the background, forgotten. Um, you know, we're just a nation with kind of so much wealth and comfort that religion just really isn't even all that important. Um, it's not as important as just maintaining our comfort. So, uh, I don't know, you know, or maybe you just have the mindset that you don't think religion is under attack anymore. So it isn't really a big deal to you. I'm not really sure. Uh, not trying to claim everyone believes one way or the other, but I do find it interesting that just so soon after the churches were deemed illegal, right? We talked about in New Mexico mm-hmm. here, they were illegal church services. Um, religious freedoms already begun to sort of fall behind on more materialistic issues. Um, make sure you get that federal spending under, under control. You want me to close my church? You got it. Um, seems a right. bit weird to me. Yep. So those are the big issues. There's some ancillary issues there that we talked about, but what are, or what's your big issue in 2024? Do you have one that you care about? Well, what I said earlier, just, um, I guess the abortion one and push for the transgender on the teens, on the kids. So like on this article, they've got kind of traditional values and trans rights at 14% of peace. Oh, that one. No, I'm not saying you have to pick off this, but it sounds like I would lump those two together, traditional values and trans rights. And yeah. you're kind of saying, yeah, that would be my number one issue, getting back to like sane values and not perverting I our mean, children. Yeah, just going back to the start of like that's kind of – the traditional values. I mean, the family, like what I said, that's like kind of where it began. Yeah. Go back to building up um, the part that's actually going to, I mean, that's going to make a difference is. Good for sure. Yeah. And I think it's a good one getting back to, to traditional values, protecting our children, especially in the schools and stuff like that. Definitely of the utmost importance. Uh, we've been beating the drum on here for homeschooling your kids for a long time. We've talked about that's the real revolution America needs. Get your kids home. Get your wives out of the workforce. Have a traditional family. Raise them in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Like That's kind of the route to success. Mm-hmm. Uh, not work yourself to death. Let somebody else raise your kids all so that you can drive a car you can't afford anyways. Um, doesn't seem like the real dream. But uh To me, again, not giving this a ton of thought, but my biggest issue would kind of be an all-encompassing issue. Uh, And my biggest issue is that we have to find an alternative to the Republican Party. Because I think all of these issues here stem from the fact that we have a uniparty in Washington. Um, And really, the Republican Party has no interest in returning this nation to its founding principles, right? Right. We can complain all we want about Joe Biden spending this nation into oblivion. He's just following what Donald Trump did. Um, You know, we can shake our fist at the liberals who want to promote abortion, but Republicans sat on their hands for 60 years and let abortion run rampant in this nation. Um, And we've said this since the start of this podcast. We'll beat this drum until things change that um, the Democrat Party is satanic and the Republican Party sucks. So, you know, really our last hope of voting Republican in this presidential election ended when Americans, the Christian conservatives, chose Donald Trump over Ron DeSantis. Yep. You know, when that happened, we were kind of like, yeah, we're done. Uh, You know, not not thrilled with that. So uh, that's my biggest issue. Um, You know, and really that only leaves us with RFK Jr., who I don't like a lot. Uh, I like him in some areas, but I dislike the Republican Party more than I dislike things about RFK Jr. So, and this isn't something we've talked about, but we're probably, and me and Nikki haven't even talked about this. We're probably going to be a single vote household. Um, I think I'm feeling more like that's the right way to go forward as a single vote. Like I vote for the whole family. Mm Mm-hmm. 
because I think it's weird to pit husbands and wives against each other on the direction of anything, right? You shouldn't be a house divided. And um, that should hopefully, if you love your wife and she submits to you all the godly things you should do, it shouldn't just be, we're voting for my guy and you shut up and you don't get a say. It should be, let's talk about this. You know, why do liberal white women want Hillary Clinton when I, you know, want Ted Cruz? Let's come to an understanding here. And, you know, as a family, we have to walk this road yeah. together. So let's come to an agreement. And I think that's a better way rather than just pitting everybody against each other. Yeah. Um, I agree. So we haven't talked about that. I, mean, I just sprung it on Nikki here, but uh, I felt like I, wasn't saying anything she would be in disagreement with. And, uh, you know, so we're leaning RFK Jr. simply because we need a new alternative. The Republican Party um, doesn't doesn't support what we support anymore. Um, So to continue supporting them because somebody on Fox News told you, if you don't vote for Trump, you're voting for Biden. I'm out on that. The scare tactics aren't for me anymore. So Uh, Let us know what you guys think about these. Uh, We would love to hear what issues are of the utmost importance to you. Um, You know, when you're going to vote this year, uh, if you're going to vote or if you've kind of just thrown your hands up on the whole thing, uh, we'd love to hear that as well. 